If you're looking for the best laptops for Autodesk applications, then you came to the right video. Whether it be Autodesk 3ds Max, Autodesk Maya, or even Autodesk Revit, we're gonna walk through budget-friendly laptops all the way up to the high-end ones and help you pick the right one for your needs. Now, first and foremost, if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability of any of these laptops, they'll be linked in the description below. If you do make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. Of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Jumping right into the budget-friendly category, Kick things off with the HP Victus, the Lenovo Legion 5, the Acer Swift X, the Dell Gaming G15, and the Asus Republic of Gamer Flow X13. Now, as you can see, all of these laptops have anywhere from an RTX 3050 Ti all the way up to the RTX 3070 in the options of the laptops. When you go ahead and you search these laptops, you'll see these with a variety of components. So when you're searching for these laptops, the budget-friendly ones are gonna be the ones with the RTX 3050 Ti's and the Ryzen 5 6600H and maybe even the 5600H, which would be last gen's version of that processor, as well as the i5 12500H or the 11500H or the 11400H. Those are gonna be the budget-friendly ones. Now, those laptops I think are good entry-level laptops for the auto desk programs. They're not going to be the best performing laptops, but they will get the job done. I definitely recommend having one with at least 16 gigs of RAM. 32 gigs of RAM would be the preferred, in my opinion, just so you have a lot of ceiling for the application. If you don't know much about RAM, every time you open an application on your computer, it will pull from the RAM in your computer. So let's say you have Google Chrome open, you're listening to Spotify, and you have an Autodesk program open. You could be using anywhere from 10 to 16 gigs of RAM at a minimum. So that's why I say you wanna start at 16 gigs of RAM as your minimum, in my opinion, and then work your way up to 32 so you don't bottleneck your system. You could have a laptop with an i9-12900H and an RTX 3080 Ti, but if you have eight gigs of RAM in that system, it's not even gonna allow you to get the full performance out of those components. So you make sure you have enough RAM inside of your laptop. Now you'll see here, some of these laptops have eight gigs of RAM, and that is where you can get them on a budget-friendly level. I would buy that laptop, but then upgrade it as your budget expands if you're starting on a smaller budget. Now my top pick here on this lineup would definitely be the Lenovo Legion 5. I would personally get it with the RTX 3060 or higher. Now, like I said, the RTX 3050 Ti's will get you started, but my personal comfortable entry level for Autodesk applications would be the RTX 3060. I just think that six gigs of VRAM in the 3060 versus that four gigs of VRAM in the 3050 Ti, it gives you the bump in performance that you need to really handle the program well and not have a lot of lagginess when you're working. Now, the primo sweet spot for me, I would say it would be the 3070 or the 3070 Ti, but of course the price moves up. And as we move on to the more expensive laptops, you will see that. Now, one of my favorite on the go friendly, thin and light, great battery life laptops on this lineup would be the Asus Republic of Gamer Flow X. X13, that is a killer laptop. Moving on to the mid-range laptops, this is where we're gonna see the HP Omen, the Asus Zephyrus series, that's the G14, the G15, and the M16, the Asus Republic of Gamer Strix G15, the Lenovo Legion 7 Slim and 7i Slim, as well as my favorite laptop on the lineup, the Lenovo Legion 5 and 5i Pro. The Lenovo Legion 5 and 5i Pro has been one of the best performing laptops for the past two years. I have a model right here on my desk. These things absolutely kill it. They have the most optimized performance with the components that they have. This right here has an i7-12700H and an RTX 3060, and it beats out laptops with an i9-12900H and an RTX 3070 Ti. So this is an extremely efficient power-packed laptop. I think if you're going to be doing Autodesk work, whether it be in 3ds Max, Maya, or Revit, this could be a killer machine at the price point. These are around the $1,600 to $1,800 price point, depending on the model and configuration that you have. Um, they could get slightly more expensive, but that's pretty much the average price for most of the configuration. So absolutely stellar laptop. And again, these laptops are all great mid-range price point laptops, but this is probably one of my favorite 16 inch models. Now, if you're gonna go for more of an on-the-go friendly laptop, I would consider the Asus Zephyrus G14 with the RX 6700S. It's a killer laptop with great performance. And I think you'll really be happy with that one if you're looking for more of a compact on-the-go friendly laptop. If you're looking for a thin laptop, but still a 16 inch, I would go for the Lenovo Legion 7i or 7 Slim. Uh, those are both really great models and they'll have great performance as well. 
If you're an HP fan, the HP Omen is great as well. Uh, and then the Asus Republic of Gamers Strict G15, a little more of a gamer style laptop, still great. I'm just not a big fan of the gamer style look as I am a creative professional talking to creative professionals. Now let's go ahead and move forward here into the MacBook Pro lineup. I have seen good performance out of the MacBook Pro lineup. However, for some of the programs, you're gonna be running an emulation or you'll be running parallels. And so the issue I have with the Mac products, I didn't wanna leave them out, but I wanted to explain them, is they have the performance necessary from a spec sheet you know, perspective. However, it takes some finagling to get them to work inside of Autodesk. Now, there may come a point, you may be watching this video and you're like, the point's already come, but you know, there may come a point, if it hasn't yet, where they will have native applications for the Autodesk programs. Um, if that's happened already or if it hasn't happened, um, that depends on when you watch this video. But what you have to realize is you won't get the full performance and you may have some issues, some compatibility issues with the Autodesk applications. So just keep that in mind. Um, all the Windows laptops will run without any hitches, um, especially workstation GPUs, which we'll talk about next. So personally, like I'm saying, I would not necessarily recommend Apple uh, MacBook Pros if you're really your main focus is Autodesk. If you happen to be doing Photoshop work and video editing, and you're like, you know, I might jump into Autodesk from time to time. I could see it being a good fit. But if it's like full-time Autodesk user, it wouldn't be my pick. Okay, I said workstation, so let's talk about that. So there's workstation GPUs inside of the Asus ProArt StudioBook Pro 16 OLED. You can get a, I think it's either an A2000 all the way up to an A5000 uh, with the StudioBooks. Now for Autodesk Revit, Autodesk Revit is one of those programs that has been built from the ground up to work with workstation GPUs. That's the NVIDIA Quadro series, the Video Quadro RTX, you know, a2000 through A5000, or even the P1000s or the T500s, like those workstation focused GPUs are built to work with programs like Autodesk Revit or SolidWorks. Autodesk Maya, Autodesk 3ds Max, they're not as particular, but the other two are. And so if you're gonna be using those other two, I recommend doing a workstation GPU. It will be very important, it'll be very helpful and you get great performance out of it. Now, here's another lineup of more mid to high end range. The MSI Creator M16 is a great laptop with great performance. The Dell XPS 15 has an RTX 3050, if you can see there. Though it does have an i7-12700. To me, this is on the lineup because I like the build quality of the Dell XPS 15. So if you're somebody who's doing some light 3D modeling work, but if you want a high quality from a build quality standpoint, I love the Dell XPS. So that's gonna be more of a premium laptop with mid tier performance. Hope that helps. The Gigabyte Aero 16 OLED is a killer laptop. It's got an i7-12700H and RTX 3070 Ti. That is a fantastic sweet spot. They can be a little on the pricey side, but sometimes you can get them on a really good discount. So keep an eye out on bestbuy.com or maybe even Amazon. Those go on sale and it's killer. I've seen those as low as like $1,600 or $1,500 down from like $2,300 or $2,100. So keep an eye out for those. And then one of my favorite laptops of the year past two years, is going to be that studio book I was telling you about earlier. So it has the dial, which is actually insanely helpful, uh, especially in 3D modeling programs. You can you know, zoom in, zoom out, change your axis, just do all kinds of stuff with the dial. It is fantastic. I love this laptop and it's got great performance. You can get it in a number of configurations. You, you can get it with gaming GPUs like the GeForce RTX 3070, or you can get it with the Quadro series like the A2000 up to the A5000. So keep an eye out for that laptop. It's a really, really good one. Next is gonna be the high-end workstations, okay? So these are gonna be laptops with 3070 Ti's and above, and then those A-series GPUs that I was talking about. Some of the best laptops are gonna be the HP ZBook Studios and Furies, if you're somebody looking at SolidWorks or Autodesk Revit, those workstation-focused softwares that are built from the ground up for workstation GPUs. Like I said, some of the other ones, you can get great performance, say out of the 3070 Ti or the 3080 Ti. Um, but I would definitely keep in mind that if you're gonna go for Revit or SolidWorks, that that workstation GPU is really worth it. Choice is yours, they get a lot more expensive, but if you're a serious creative professional working in those programs, you will see a benefit in choosing so. Now, a lot of people ask me, you know, what about like 64 gigs of RAM or 32, like which one's better? I've honestly seen at around the 32 gig range, 
you get great performance. 64 gigs, it is helpful, but it's only helpful for certain tasks inside of the program. I would start at 32, and if you see, you know, you're getting some bottlenecking depending on the tasks you're executing, maybe look in the task manager and be like, holy crap, I'm using so much RAM in the program, then maybe you could make that upgrade to 64 down the road, but I don't think it's a priority to get above 32 if you're working on your budget standpoint uh, when you're first making the purchase. But get above 16, get 16 or above, that's really where I recommend don't get eight. You just, you're going to run into trouble. It's going to bottleneck and be really frustrating. I hope this video has brought you some value. If it has, definitely smash down or massage or caress that like button. Subscribe if you don't miss out with more videos like this. And if you're curious, again, about the live pricing or availability of any of these models, you can head down into the description below and click those links. And of course, if you make a purchase, it'll be no extra cost to you, but it'll help keep this channel alive. And I'm always grateful. I'll see you here in the next one.